is that they'd start followed by hymn number five. They're all very familiar hymns, and uh, I've asked Brian and Jenny if they would lead our hymns this morning, so uh, two, 63, and then number five. God attend while Zion sings the joy that from thy presence springs to spread one day with thee on earth exceeds a thousand days of mirth. God is our sun, he makes our day. God is our shield, he guides our way from all the assaults of hell and sin, from foes without and fears within. All needful grace will God bestow, and crown that grace with glory too. He gives us all things and withholds no real good from upright souls. O God, our King, whose sovereign sway the glorious hosts of heaven obey and devils at his presence flee. Blessed is the man that trusts in thee. Number 63, holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our praise shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 though darkness roar thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which wert and art and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though darkness hide thee, Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord. shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Number five. The Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy help and salvation. All ye who hear, 
Now to his temple draw near, praise him in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy word and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder on earth what the Almighty can do. If with his love he befriend thee. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that hath life and breath come now with praises before him. Let the amen. Sound from his people again, gladly for I we adore him. If you'll turn back one page, we'll use hymn number four as our opening hymn. I would like for you to stand and join together a worship the king. Hymn number four. Let's stand. O oh, worship the King, all oh, glorious above. O oh, gratefully sing His power and His love. Our shield and defender, the author of days. Pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. O oh, tell of his might, O oh, sing of his grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space, this chariots of wrath, a deep thunder clouds form, and dark is his path on the wings of the storm. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust, and feeble as frail in thee do we trust nor find thee to fail thy mercies how tender how firm to the end our maker defender redeemer and friend our father in heaven great and wonderful is thy name and power and mighty are thy works. Father, we call upon you this morning to invite you in spirit and in presence that we might worship you in truth and in righteousness, that we might desire the things of thy kingdom above all things of this earth, and that we might know thy love and have the joy that you desire that we might have. For it is that creation that you gave us to have joy and your desires that we might have it. Father, we ask your, your presence and your guidance here this morning. Please help us to sense the, the power and the importance of the ordinances. Help us to understand the, the need that we have to come humbly before you, to present before you an offering, even a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And so, Father, it is our desire this morning as we gather prior to the communion service that we might have your Spirit's presence, that we might have a, an awareness of the holiness of this coming hour, and that we might give back to you that joy that you placed in us. In Jesus' name, amen. When we uh, prepare to enter into a season of prayer, we're going to go into that using hymn number 38.
you want to go ahead and put your finger there at the moment. Might be a couple moments. <clears throat> I'm going to, to take a few moments to remind us, um, not that uh, anyone here needs a reminding, but it, but it never hurts for us to have a, a bit of remembrance. And in the process of preparing for this, uh, like it often happens when we read scripture, we come across something that for some reason we just didn't pay attention to before. And uh, I want to share that with you. It's at the end of this reading. I'm going to read first from Exodus chapter 12. This is where the, uh, the Passover is instituted. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it, according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head and his legs, and with the pertness thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus ye shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste in the Lord's Passover." For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. We all know that the, the Passover was to make sure that the house of Israel recognized when Christ should come that they could understand the whole purpose of the Passover is that those who accept the blood of the Lamb for their protection are protected, and those who do not will be destroyed. I'm going to read a couple of verses from Matthew chapter 26. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the Passover, and then the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled the scribes and the elders of the people, went to the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Uh, there was a little piece in this that I had not paid much attention to, and yet there's another even greater one coming. But that, <clears throat> he said, you know that after two days of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Uh, several years ago, uh, my brother, uh, David Collier, preached about the Passover, about the fact that you were required to take the lamb into your household. And it was a period of, of, of days. And he said, if you know anything about lambs and about children and, and even us as adults, how much joy that creates in that very short period of time. And the lamb has no idea that it's about to be betrayed and killed. 
Now, Christ did know that. He even said, I'll be betrayed and killed. But that lamb doesn't know that. And in the commanding of the disciples to prepare the Passover, there's a couple things I want you to catch. This is from Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire have I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled which is written in the prophets concerning me. Then I will partake with you in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you that I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and brake and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new testament of my blood, which is shed for you. And then I'm going to jump down from 20 there to 28. Ye are they who have continued with me in my temptations, and I am pointing unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You know, we love, we love feasts. Uh, we had one a couple days ago out at the park. Uh, we had one yesterday, our family, uh, at our place. We love feasts because it's a time to gather together, to fellowship, to have joy in one another's company and presence. And it's no different from our Lord and Savior. And when he sent his disciples uh, in the scriptures you read to prepare the Passover, Passover one of the things that kind of just goes bes beside is that to kill the lamb. It's not just to get food together for, a, for dinner. That's part of the preparing of the Passover. And then they also say in there to eat the Passover, meaning to eat the body of the lamb. The little verse that I hadn't paid attention to is that the feast continues. Even though it was commanded back when Israel was commanded to have this feast forever, we say, well, there's an end of time for man, but there isn't an end time of the feast. Christ said to his disciples, you're going to have this feast with me in the kingdom. So this doesn't end. And I was recently aware that uh, <clears throat> we need to be changing our minds. We need to live now as in the kingdom of God every single day. We can't be constantly projecting forward and saying, I can't wait till Zion comes and everything gets set straight. No, we have to be set straight now. We need to become capable of walking with Christ even now. So this morning, as we come, the purpose of this hour is a preparation for that Passover feast. We're not going to kill a lamb, but in essence, that is what is being asked of us. Whatever the tender desires of our heart that we take great joy in that might separate us from God, we're, we're to kill those. We're to lay before him a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And whatever it is that is required to break our hearts, that's what we have to do this day. So as you prepare, I would, I would ask that um, if you feel a desire at all to, as we start out with hymns of praise, if you desire to give praise to God, thank him. We're here because he has brought us here. He has made it possible for us to have this joy together. Prayers of praise are very honorable, very pleasing to your Father in heaven. Also, this is a good opportunity for, for repentance, for a chance to, to present to God a broken heart, asking for his forgiveness. So I would encourage each one of you who, as the moment feels right and as you feel led by the Spirit, to stand and share a prayer. We do have a microphone that will be brought to you when you stand, and that's just so everybody can hear prayers. Not everybody can hear clearly when we speak. So I'd like for us to sing together hymn number 38, and then I would like for you to 
stand as you feel led to offer prayers this morning, whether it's something in praise or something in repentance or something just personal between you and God, but it's not really uh, a time for airing personal problems. It is a time for, for actually sharing in community one with another. Hymn number 38, and then we'll enter to the season of prayer. Make thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea, beyond the sacred page, I seek thee, Lord, my spirit pants for thee, O living word. Breast thou the truth, dear Lord, to me, to me, as thou didst bless the bread by Galilee. Then shall all bondage cease, all fetters fall, and I shall find my peace, my all in all. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, it's uh, good to gather in thy house on this Sabbath morning. It's good, Father, to come and to uh, experience the stillness, the quietness, Father, the peace that is present. to hear the words, Father, that uh, remind us of this very day and that which we are about to uh, share in, in the hour to come. In that which you did for uh, each of us, Father. Though it was for all mankind, it is very personal for each of us. And I pray that uh, we could experience joy this day. For Father, there are many things in the world that would uh, cause us to be down at times, that might cause us to uh, even question and doubt, discouragement. But Father, this is a day to truly rejoice. For as we come to remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we offer before you this day that broken heart and contrite spirit, that, Father, you fill us with your presence. And there's no greater joy, Father, than having your presence 
amongst us. And so I would pray that we could uh, put aside those things, Father. Give them unto you. And as we've been reminded this morning that uh, repentance is most important is all. That through the things that we do and say or maybe times we don't do and say, Father, we cause that separation. And I would pray that that separation would be brought together through the unity of your Son, Jesus Christ. And that we might allow you this day, Father, to touch our hearts, our minds, and our souls would be uplifted unto joy. So bless us in this hour. Might we experience the stillness of this moment. Might we allow that to fill us, Father. And as we enter into the hour to come, and as we stretch forth our hands, might we feel your presence as we would partake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless us, Father, is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I know that we are told to be ready to always bear a testimony of the hope and the joy that is within us. And Father, I'm sorry. I am not always, I'm not always ready to do that. It's hard for me to um, share what I may have on my heart. I know you've been very good to me. Things are not always like what I would like for them to be. But Father, I am very blessed, and I appreciate your help and the help of all the others. And I pray that I will do a better job of witnessing of you and your goodness and share that joy of the hope that is within me. I've been blessed to ra be raised in a good family and taught these things that uh, bring us joy. And so, Father, I pray that I will do a better job of serving you and doing your will. In Jesus' name, amen.
Our loving Heavenly Father, I would thank you and praise you this day. For it is important that we recognize that um, all of the things that you have done for us and on our behalf are because you love us and you have good desires for us. And because you love us, you would not have seen us suffer and do not desire for us to wallow in sin. You would not see us face the punishment that we deserved. But you set us free. We faced a, a life sentence. We, um, we have all fallen short of your glory. We have all sinned. And yet, um, you who knew no sin, you paid, you paid the price for us. And you do desire that um, we would realize that forgiveness. You desire that we would recognize that we have been clean, me made clean. You would desire that we would recognize that we are forgiven. Because you do desire that we would have joy. And see that you desire for us to be citizens of your kingdom. And after doing all these things, you simply desire for us to want that. That we would lay down our sinful desires, that we would lay down ourself and seek after you. Lord, how good you are to us. And we thank you for the gift of your son. And we thank you for the gift of repentance. And we thank you for the plain and simple example that you set for us. And even for the beautiful pattern that your son fulfilled as he walked this earth. For truly he was the lamb that was prepared from the foundation of the world. So Lord, we pray that you would help us to have a broken heart and a contrite spirit this day. Help us to be able to lay down those things that separate us from you. Help us to give you those things that we might not be separated from you and that you would increase within our lives. And further, we pray that your spirit would be here this day to remind those that walk into these doors, everyone, that you love them that they are important to you. There is not one soul that you are okay losing. There is not one soul that has ever been made that is not of value to you. And you would want them all. And you leave those and go after those that need that reminder, personal reminder that you love them. And so we pray that each one that enters these doors today would feel loved because of you. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen.
God, the Eternal Father, we pray for thy people. Not only the ones that are present here this morning, but for those that are still within their homes, preparing to come, still within the communities. And we pray for them, Father, that thou would reach out unto them all and bless them with thy spirit, that they may be joyful in their return to thee and come rejoicing and singing that thy will may be done upon this earth. We thank you for the many blessings that you have blessed us all with, for the many times that you have reached down unto us. We thank you for all of those. And yet we continue to ask, continue to be with us and help us and show us and guide us that we may be truly thy people, establish all the things that you have asked us to do. For we know if, we, if you had not spoke of it, it would not be possible. But because you have and you have given it unto us, we know it is, it is possible for us to accomplish. And so we pray these things that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. been a very quiet group this morning, which is okay. If you like to, in the next few minutes, um, I was thinking this, um, I think this frequently, you know, for a lot of years now, I've had the privilege of, of uh, serving communion, um, and I know from the very first time that I had that privilege that... Uh, it was impressed on me that we are to be clean who bear the vessels of the Lord. And every time that we have a service such as what is coming, it is a holy, a holy situation, not, not some ritual, not some performance. And so right up very to, the, to the very moment of serving communion, I always pray, Lord, make me clean if I'm serving. Make, make me clean so that I can, be, can I can be your servant to deliver this to the people. And I, I shared before the memories I had as a child in the auditorium when it was made clear to me because of the way the priesthood moved throughout the entire body. And the entire body, and from the balcony at the auditorium, you could see, you could see how Christ's blood flowed through the entire body. And I was very impressed by that. And I knew that that's what God wants, is he wants his spirit, he wants his, his will to flow through all the body. And it takes the body to be responsive to that. Um, 
And I know that those who are present here this morning are responsive. That's why you're here. Nevertheless, it's good at times to, uh, to bear witness. It's also good at times to offer prayers of praise and thanks. And so I want to give you opportunity in the next few minutes if you want to um, share a testimony or if you want to just say a, a short prayer of pra praise and thanks. That would be very appropriate this morning. In uh, <clears throat> looking back over my life, and I know we're not supposed to look back because being raised on a farm, you, <clears throat> you're plowing a field and you can't look back and plow a straight furrow. But uh, in looking back upon my life this morning and thinking, seeing that... Uh, here because of him because of his goodness because of his mercy because of uh, his guiding hand and oft times uh, I haven't realized I guess the times that uh, he has guided and directed because of always not always but think of how smart I might be and I realize that's not the case and so uh, I thank him for that our Heavenly Father we are thankful that you have uh, worked within our life to the point that we find ourselves in this setting this morning, in this very moment, where we feel and know that it is by your hand that we are here, and by the promptings of your spirit throughout our lives that uh, have brought us through various means and has uh, to this point. And as has been uh, related this morning, that uh, it's no accident. It's not by happenstance. But it's by your purpose and for your purpose that we find ourselves uh, in this setting. And so we're thankful for those blessings, for those times, and as has been prayed for the fact that you forgive us, the fact that you uh, still love us in spite of uh, our stumbling, and that even those that we read about and see and uh, have been expressed that uh, 
even as you were 12, in the beginning uh, didn't understand, maybe betrayed you and denied you. There was still a love that uh, reached into their hearts and their minds trying to uh, help the understanding and the comprehension of who you are. And so we're thankful for this feast that uh, we will partake of and what it symbolizes and what it means and what you're uh, still trying to express to us that we might understand and that we might comprehend in a full measure your love for us, your hopes for us, your desires for us. And so we're thankful that you are who you are. You're righteous, you're holy, perfect. So we pray this morning that your spirit would continue with us and that those who enter would uh, recognize your presence. They might gain that strength and renewed desire for thee that is needed. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Lord, I thank you for the bursting joy in my heart. Um, it's not that I'm uh, not usually happy. I feel like I am by nature a positive person, but um, you know my struggles, Lord, and The torments of my brain and my emotions, my adult life. But I would feel ashamed if I didn't stand and share the joy that I have in you. I praise your holy name. I thank you so much for all the blessings that you give to us and um, just um, looking out for us every day and um, our entire lives and I thank you for this place and these these my family and, and this 
um, home that we have to come and and share in each other in you and and just be able to worship you and um, call upon you and listen um, to listen um, to our loved ones share about you and um, the messages that we hear from the pulpit and just the wonderful ways that you reach out to us each and every day. And I thank you so much, Lord, for your love and your compassion and that you care for us and um, that you sent your son for us. And um, just the reaching that you, you do for us each and every day, even though we don't look for you. Um, especially when we don't look for you. And uh, and then we find you in an un unexpected ways. And I thank you for that. And um, I pray that you would continue to reach out for us and that um, you would help us to reach out to you as well and that um, we would just continue to listen and be ready for you and, and um, ready for the ways that you would um, help us to lead others to you. And um, I just pray and I thank you for all those wonderful, wonderful ways in which you are so mighty and, and marvelous. And in Jesus Christ's name I pray and I thank you. Amen. I want to thank everyone for attending this morning and for coming in the uh, spirit of quiet preparation. Um, I know for me, the the knowing that uh, my sins are forgiven and I'm allowed to go forward in freedom is a very great value to me. And uh, a monthly thing doesn't almost seem enough. I wonder if I would t take it for granted if it was daily. Maybe, maybe not. But I know that uh, you know, bas basically taking what Howard said is what Christ said about you can't, you can't go back. You can't change the back backside of your life. It's already happened. It's already passed. You can repent and be forgiven of it. But always Jesus said... When he said, thy sins are forgiven thee, he said, go thy way and sin no more. The focus is always on the future. The future is where he hopes for us to be with him and where we hope to be free of our sins and in his presence. Let's stand and sing hymn number 13 together. Um, I don't want to necessarily a, a benediction on the service, rather the, a prayer of transition. Um, Rex, would you be willing to give us that prayer of transition? Let's stand and sing hymn number 13 together. Come thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise. Father, all glorious, or all victorious, come and reign over us, Alpha of days. Jesus, our Lord, arise, scatter our enemies, now make them fall. Let thine almighty aid our sure defense be made. Our souls on thee be stayed. Lord, hear our call. 
Come, holy comforter, thy sacred witness bear in this glad hour. Thou who almighty art, now rule in every heart, and ne'er from us depart, Spirit of power. Our Father who art in heaven, it is unto you that uh, we have raised our, our hearts in prayer this morning, whether they were vocal or silent. And Lord, you receive each one of those. And you know the, uh, the content of our heart. And for this, we're grateful. We're grateful, Lord, that we have this opportunity that is before us in the hour to come. We're thankful for those who have uh, vocally shared the prayers and the testimonies, knowing, Lord, that uh, it is you who we desire to serve, and we know it is you who has a desire for our souls. May we, Lord, uh, be the best people we can possibly be. I thank you for this hour and look forward to the hour to come. I pray that you would continue to uh, bless our pastor and bless, too, Chester as he uh, would share in the words that you placed upon his heart uh, for the sermon or the words that uh, he desires to share with us. May we each be receptive, Lord, uh, not only of your word, but of that opportunity that we have to reach forth our hand to that most perfect gift. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. 